It's time for Windows Weekly with Paul Therott, episode 157. Coming up, the latest Hotmail, some great new features. Paul takes a look at the new Windows phones, including the Kin, and a tricky way to map Windows SkyDrive to a drive letter. It's all ahead with Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott, episode 157, recorded May 19th, 2010. Next of Kin. Windows Weekly is brought to you by GoToMeeting. Improve your conference calls and keep everyone on the same page when you share your screen with GoToMeeting. For your free 30-day trial, visit gotomeeting.com slash windowsweekly. And by Carbonite, the leader in online backup. Back up your PC or Mac off-site securely and automatically. For a free trial offer plus two free months with purchase, go to carbonite.com, offer code windowsweekly. And by audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show that covers all the great news about the folks up there in Microsoft. In fact, he is in Redmond right now. Mr. Paul Therott, the editor-in-chief of the Supersite for Windows at winsupersite.com. News editor for Windows IT Pro. you got sad eyes today, Paul. Have you been... There's a huge Macintosh right in front of my face. <laughs> and it is going through a like a photo slideshow thing and it's like a, it's like a car crash i can't keep stop looking at it <laughs> oh, poor paul paul has sad eyes he's forced compelled in fact he's visiting a friend uh staying with a friend and apparently this friend has suddenly conceived a love for apple for I, it was it wasn't really that sudden but i think i hate to tell you but in the shot behind you there there, there appears to be an ipad actually that's a toshiba Tablet piece. Oh, thank God. See, yeah. we're, we're it's in the back because he doesn't use it. Oh. All the stuff he actually uses is <laughs> in, front in front of me. Of it's you. all like you have white to look and at it. silver. And... You've got to look at it. Unbelievable. So uh, you are embedded, I guess, an embedded reporter. I, finally. <laughs> and you know, they embedded me in the most critical nerve center of the entire campus, this oh, really? uh, abandoned building somewhere in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it's really actually kind of humorous, but uh, I assume it's a punishment of some kind, but. According to them, it's actually very hard to get a, a single room for an entire day. So do I have to go. Do they have, as Apple undoubtedly has, mm -hmm. um, a special place for people, outsiders, to go where they can handle yeah. in uh, security new material that's not supposed to leak out? I mean, I presume no. that's why you're there. Right. Yeah, that is what's happening, but that's not... No, they don't have a special place for that. Uh, we just... You, you can't get anywhere in this complex, you know, in any of these buildings without a key card, and, and there's a lot of security and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, so I am in a room with a device and, and also a guy from their PR company, which is a little awkward, but... He has to sit it, there and watch? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's he's like be, the... Uh, he must the be a, he's low on the totem pole. <laughs> well, yeah, so this is... It's bad enough for me, right? I mean, what's it like for this guy? He just has to sit there. I, t you know, I tend to... I talk to myself. I sing. <laughs> Oh, so you know we're uh, dear diary. Today I spent yeah, yeah, yet yeah. another day with Paul Therott. He talks to himself. He <laughs> sings. That funky smell, and he smells kind of odd. It's like it's like a cheese closet in here. <laughs> what yeah, is, I, I so I feel bad for him, but you know. I, I pray that Paul will stop bringing his brie sandwiches. Do you bring <laughs> yes. Do you bring lunch when you when you do something like this? Uh, no, we this most of the well the newer buildings on campus have cafeterias and by the way the food at this these places is fantastic has and to really be. Cheap. Has it's to fantastic be. it's yeah. absolutely well, but they do right. make them pay for it yeah but it's i mean it's almost nothing it's so subsidized. i mean a really a really good lunch is you know 5 or 6 yeah. bucks i mean it's tremendous food and we have to walk across the street to another building this thing i swear to you it, it dates back to the 1980s and it appears to have no function whatsoever there's a woman at the front a receptionist of some kind and then the rest of it appears to be <laughs> it's empty. Hey, if I, I were you, me. I'd pry up a floorboard, see if Bill left some uh, bags of money lying around. He might have, you know, forgotten. 
it's like I said to the guy, it's like the set of one of those alien horror movies where you're in outer space in a derelict spaceship and you hear sounds, but there's no one there. That's what this whole building is like. <laughs> it is, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But whatever, you know, I'm getting what I want. And unfortunately, what I wanted was turning into, it's, it's, it's surprisingly grueling. Uh, what is it that you want, Paul? I mean, what? Well, I, I don't have it. Well, what I really want is a device. So they can't give out devices yet. That's coming. But. Wait a minute. You came all the way to Washington State, mm -hmm. all the way across the country, no, 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 to sit in a me, gloomy no. room, and they yeah. didn't even give you a device? No, no, they did give me a device. I meant oh. what I want is them to send me one so I can use it from home oh, oh, on, oh, 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 no, on no, a no, normal no. schedule. Sorry, so, Ricky, we can't do that. Can't do that yet. No. So, But I need to get going on the book. And uh, this is allowing me to document... All of the screens, what happens when you do this, what happens when you do that, you know, and understand what's changing over time because things are changing. And, um, you know, just be able to write about it intelligently. You can only go so far with the emulator stuff. Now, the device that you have, is this a prototype or is this going to be a production device? Is it from a company? I mean, can you talk about that at all? No, apparently not. Okay. Um, it is Windows Mobile, Windows Phone 7 though, yes? Yep, yep. Okay, yep. that much we know. And it yep. is, and how close to final code is it? Can't talk about that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. There's not a lot I can say. I mean, other okay. than the basics of what I'm doing. And uh, the one thing I would like to talk about a little bit, and I'll be writing an article about this in some capacity, is, you know, some of the public information. Um, I, I asked for clarification on some stuff. You know, when you, when you think about... Um, what it is I'm trying to do for the book. I mean, there's a lot of issues that just are not, they're not time sensitive per se, other than that I have a schedule for the book, you know, but I, I don't need to rush out and publish information about it. But there has been a bunch of stuff out in the public that might, I think needs to be addressed a little bit. Things like the copy and paste issue, you know, mm -hmm. um, how documents get in and out of the phone and so forth. And, and some of that I can talk about and some I can't. Oh, and, good. And, all right. And all that. But, um, you know, but I do want to speak more generally to the, to the, their new way of doing things uh, in Windows Phone, which I think is really important because it's actually very much like what Apple does, except it's a little more transparent. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, when Apple ships something like the first generation iPhone, there's never any talk of, we know that it is lacking in this area, in this area, and we're going to fix that in a future software release, right? Apple tries to play down whatever, you know, issues it may have. They'd like you to think they're perfect. Yeah, in other words, we don't think there are issues, and then next time they'll come out and they'll, you know, they'll address all those issues that everyone complained about. Right. Everyone will applaud them for it. But we don't believe like, you need cut and paste until, <laughs> until we've got it. Well, I, you're, you're even cut and paste, but we've never heard of that. Right. Uh, let me get let me get back to you on that one. You know, I, I, they just don't want to talk about it. Right. Uh, so I, I I appreciate what they're doing, and, I, and there's also sort of a design idea around, you know, the less is more thing and. We want to really nail certain aspects of this user experience. Um, and rather th than do a bunch of things poorly, we're just going to do these, you know, this set of things very, very well. We're not going to do the other stuff at all in this first release. You know, and we know Microsoft does uh, knows what people are saying about it and what the feedback is, and they know where they want to go down the road. But, you know, for, for revision one, it's a very Apple-like thing. They're not saying it that way. But in that they're focusing on very specific things. And I think that's smart. You know, I think it's a, a good way to do it. But to their credit, they're also addressing some of these concerns that people have um, and have expressed online about, um, you know, various things that are lacking. So they have ideas about how they may address these uh, needs going forward as well. So they're, they're sort of owning up to that stuff too. It is but tricky. I, I mean, you don't want to uh, hurt sales of the, this handset it's right. different with phones because people have to make a two-year commitment to the phone. So if they think next year there's going to be a better one, they might wait. Well, except that the, their plan for fixing these things doesn't involve a new device. It involves uh, updating firmware. the software okay. for, you for free right now. This is something It was funny. We talked about this. Uh, you know, Windows Mobile has always had this Windows update utility built in. And, and one of the guys there asked me, uh, you know, what do you think that this thing does? And I said, to my knowledge, it's not connected to anything. I don't. I don't think it does anything. I think it's just a. You've never seen an update push. It's a pretty picture. You never see an update. Huh. So, uh, Windows Phone that, that is not going to be the case. They don't have a lot of details around how they, uh, you know, will be updating. But yeah, I, one of the very firm mantras around Windows Phone Seven is we're not going to make the mistakes that Windows Mobile made, and this is one of those areas very specifically where, you know, they're taking control of that. And I, 
they did not say this, but I, I believe there will be many updates, you know, over time and, and kind of along the lines of what Apple does, I think, with Mac o I'm sorry, with the, the iPhone. But that's different because Apple makes the iPhone. I mean, how much control can you take? Don't, don't the carriers ultimately determine when something's going to be pushed and when it's not going to be pushed? Or can no. you make a deal? No, no they don't. not in this case. No. Okay. No. So you can make a deal and say, hey, Verizon, uh, you can use our OS, but we're going to require... But we're going to be doing it. this. Yep. Okay. And they have to agree to it. And they have. You know, um, you know the, the Verizons and AT&Ts of the world also know that the Apple way of doing things has worked really well. Right. And that the Windows Mobile way of doing things has not. Didn't. Right. So they're not actually resisting this. And there's also uh, controls along the lines of such things as, you know, changing the UI and, and the, the boot up experience and the start experience and all that stuff. Um, far more limited what uh, OEMs, you know, uh, wireless partners and the hardware makers, uh, third-party software developers and so forth can do to change the phone. You know, in Windows Mobile, you know, the best-selling Windows Mobile device today probably is that HTC HD2. You wouldn't even know you were running Windows Mobile. Right. Because it has its own UI. And uh, HTC is doing the same thing to Android. They're, they're right. skinning it with sense. Now, for Android, obviously, it's a completely open platform. So... You know, the sky's the limit. You can do whatever you wanted to it. It's possible uh, in the future we'll see Android devices that are so far removed right. from that standard Android look and feel. You'd never even know it was Android. Now, on Windows Phone, that's not going to be possible. And I think that's an important thing for them to do. It's it's a little bit hard for some people, I think, you know, and I think it, it, both on the customer end and then on the partner end. But it creates a, a system that's more, you know, reliable and more predictable. You know, that when you buy a Windows Mobile, I'm sorry, a Windows Phone, you're getting a Windows Phone. It's not a Windows Phone that has junk on top of it, so you don't know you have a Windows Phone. Right. They'll, it will be a consistent experience. So I think that stuff's important. Um, you know, I need to I need to kind of look at my notes here to make sure I'm not stepping on anything. But, you know, for example, with the copy and paste issue that came out, you know, they're building in... Um, the issue is that they don't have copy and paste in the first yeah. edition of Windows And, and to be clear... Um, it's not like this was a surprise to them, you know. Oh, copy and paste, you know, wouldn't think anyone would want that. You know, it's more along the lines of, look, we're, we're I keep saying we're like I'm part of this, but, you know, Microsoft is um, specifically going after, you know, several scenarios or whatever with this device. Um, there's not a huge need for copy and paste in those <laughs> solutions they've created beyond the stuff they built directly into it. Now, that said, there are going to be third-party applications and all that kind of stuff. So, um, copy and paste is something they're looking at, and they, you know, they, they've they heard the feedback. They get it. Um, but, you know, again, for this very first version, for what they're going to have built in, um, yeah, it's not going to be there. And, and But don't, you know, don't take that away from, you know, this is never happening. It's just, this is something that's going to evolve over time. And unlike in the past, it evolving over time doesn't involve you necessarily having to buy a new phone. So that's the, so, that's really good news, yeah. You, you'll be able yeah. to update it. And they, they're obviously not going to give a time frame for the updates, but they're, but they're saying we will and can yep. do that. Yep. I, I don't think they have a time frame. I, I don't right. think it's a matter of I can't talk about it. I think literally it's just know. too early. Right. No, they don't know. Right. Um, the other thing I just wanted, I think that might be interesting for people is just this notion of these panoramic hubs versus applications and so forth. And there's been a lot of confusion around that. Um, Third-party developers can create their own hubs. And these hubs are those panoramic experiences, right? The the screens that stretch beyond the, the little viewport that you get through the phone. So if you've used a Zune HD, for instance, you're, you're familiar with this, that the fact that the UI yeah. scrolls up, down, left, right, off the screen, more right. stuff's going on. That's what you mean? Yeah. yeah, and there are a bunch of really cool ones built into the phone. You know, the Office Hub, the Pictures Hub, um, you know, the people hub and so forth. And these things, you know, you, you kind of, you, you pan through them, you swipe left and right to get through the, the whole picture to see the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's some confusion around this stuff because people have uh, believed that you aren't able to create your own hubs, and that's not true. It's just that in the, uh, the CTP version of the tools, that the version that's out now, in other words, um, they don't have the APIs in there that, to make this very easy. That will come before this thing ships. So over time, obviously, they're going to upgrade the developer tools. That's absolutely coming. The, the other little bit of confusion is around whether it is possible to extend the hubs that are already built into Windows Phone. And the answer there is actually yes. It's just that the ability to do so right now varies from hub to hub. So there are things like the, um, the music and videos hub, for example, is very extensible. I think that's the most extensible one because they really feel like a lot of third-party you know, music services and so forth, they're going, going to want to extend that thing and put their own information in there. So that one is very, very extensible. 
Um, the Office Hub, I think, today is not extensible at all. Although, you know, that might change over time. But the Office Hub is very specific to Microsoft Office, so it might not make sense right away for that, you know, to need to be extended. But in both of these cases, I, you know, I think there's been some misreporting and I think there's some misunderstanding around whether, you know, as a developer, you can create your own hub, which you can, and whether you can extend the existing hubs, which you can, again, but it, it's, it just depends um, on which hub you're talking about. So let me just make sure there's nothing else in here. Yeah, I think that's most of what I can talk about. I'm trying to think of, the, of what other things come up for people. You can install well, apps on the new Windows set, Phone 7, yes? Yeah, yeah, they're going to have, yeah, they already have a, uh, Windows Market Plus for mobile, it's being dramatically overhauled for uh, Windows Phone. It's based on the Zune Marketplace. And again, if you have a Zune HD and you browse the Marketplace on your phone, I, I think you can expect, if you understand the differences between the Zune user interface and the Windows Phone user interface, it's not hard to, you know, figure out what it's going to look like. It's, um, it's that kind of thing. What is um, the difference? I mean, I, I have a Zune HD. I understand that pretty well. Yeah. How, how is this going to yeah. be different? So generally speaking, from a navigational standpoint, the big difference is that on the Zune HD, all of the navigation and all of the interaction you have with it goes through the screen. So if you're looking at, if you, you know, dive into a user interface on the Zune HD, like you go to music and then you go to playlist and then you have your playlist list. If you want to get back out of that thing, you tap at the top of the screen. That's like the, the virtual back button, up, right? That's yeah, al yeah. always the case. You go up, right? And it makes sense because it's up on top of the screen. Right. In Windows Phone, you don't do that. And the reason is Windows Phone has a, a back button. There is no up. There's a back. There's no, there's no up. There's back. So that's one difference. The other one is that um, Zune HD does not have a physical uh, volume toggle. Hmm. So uh, there's a, a playback control that pops up in the center of the Zune screen. And you see it also on the Kin device um, where you can do such things as play, pause, uh, forward, back, and then also volume up, down. And it works as a... Um, it's like a toggle switch, but it's in software, and it's right in the middle of the screen. It's pretty handy. Hmm. Now, the the uh, Windows Phone device has uh, will have volume buttons on them, so that that doesn't work exactly the same way, um, and you don't get that same playback control that appears in the middle of the screen. Let's talk about the Kin. You got a Kin. You're holding it. Yeah. And you liked it. I do. I like it a lot. I mean, I liked it when I saw it. I liked it more than I thought I was going to like it. And when they asked me which one I wanted to review, um. I wanted the little one, you know, yeah, the, the mini kin, the yeah, the Zoom one, the kin one, and um, I really, you know, it's funny. I mean, there's stuff coming down the road, obviously, with Windows Phone and so forth that I'm I'm really excited about, and I can see that I'm going to be following that kind of trajectory. But this is an interesting little diversion, and it comes at a bad time because, of course, I need to write about Windows Phone and get right. going on that. You want to play with a kin, uh, but this is a neat little phone, and I, I and the one thing I guess the takeaway here is that. Yeah, you know, it's a little unfortunate that Verizon has priced the, the wireless package on these things as high as a traditional smartphone. Uh, and so I think like might, roughly 180, 90, 100 bucks a month. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think you talk, you know, without wireless, oh, I'm sorry, without a texting plan, it's about 70 bucks, about 80 with the basic yeah. texting. Yeah, right? same, same as iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, same as Android, same as everything else. Right. Now, of course, this doesn't have an app store, right? You don't have some of the other benefits you get there. It's it's more of a closed system. It has a, it, in fact, it's a lot like the Zune HD if you think about it. There is a, a small selection of apps you can get on the Zune HD. In the case of this thing, they're all built in. There's no store online or whatever. This reminds they, me a lot of the Danger Sidekick, which was very closed, yeah. very closed platform. Well, they plan to open this more over time, and and there is some interesting stuff around the online services. Everything on this phone is backed up automatically for you to a website, which is really yep. neat. See, again, and, um, and I should say the reason it's reminiscent of the Sidekick is it, it basically is the Sidekick. It's the next yeah, generation yeah, yeah. Sidekick. Um, I, and that was the problem, by the way, that they got in with before, which is that they thought they had accidentally deleted everybody's data. Sure. <laughs> because it lives on the cloud. It doesn't really live on the phone. Is it the same well, case there where you have a, do you have a no, copy on the phone? Uh, well, yeah, of course. And and you can sync this with your, you know, PC as well for media oh, and good. so forth. But, okay. Um, no, first of all, the guys who did, <laughs> you know, the guys who did the Kin Studio stuff and the and the other uh, online services are not the same people that did the Danger thing. So, oh, okay. um, it's it's similar in concept, perhaps. But, but Microsoft it is, bought Danger, I just assume. So no, that's not in the fact, case. Huh? No, one of the things they told me was that it, the Danger guys, by and large, actually are on this team now, but they came in after the fact. Ah. Uh, uh. Uh, I think it's more of a consolidation kind of thing. Okay. They actually had nothing to do with the design of this. Oh, interesting. 
um, spiritually, I, I understand the connection. But, you know, this is uh, a surprisingly kind of high quality device, you know, just the fit and finish of it and so forth. And, and I think, as I mentioned to you earlier, um, everyone who sees this thing wants one of these. I mean, it's, it is a neat thing. I'm going to be really curious to see how my wife and my kids react to this when I get it home. Um, they are on Verizon, and it would I would be surprised if there wasn't some interest there. Interesting. Yeah. It's yeah. a neat little place. This is, for the first time ever, and it, it's kind of a nice situation to be in, I guess, mm -hmm. but the first time ever, there's some really strong phones out there that are really competitive and yeah. now people who are buying a phone and realize they're signing up for a phone for two years i think for the first time ever you know we are feeling gee, maybe this model doesn't work anymore because you upgrade a uh, computer mm -hmm. hardware at will right. um it, it would be nice if you know there's the evo there's the incredible i mean and the android said there's some great stuff now there's there's the kin and then there's going to be windows phone 7 yeah and so I, mean, I actually, so we, I have some, uh, so when, uh, some, sorry, some smartphone info later in the list, maybe we should jump to that now, because one of the things that's really interesting to me, especially in the Android space is how many devices are coming out and how hard it is to be able to say, I have the best one because every month now it seems another there's better a better one. one. Yes. It's, it's like, this is moving very, very rapidly. Very frustrating. Um, Android in the past quarter, according to Gardner, surpassed uh, Windows Mobile to become the fourth biggest smartphone platform in the world. They, um, they start over 700% growth in North America, which wow. is astonishing. Wow. Um, much, much higher growth than any other platform. Um, they're expected to surpass the iPhone either late this year or in the first quarter of 2011 uh, worldwide. In terms and, of uh, market percentage or in terms of unit, sales, unit, unit sales. sales. Okay. Yeah. And oh, they've already done that in the U.S. They've already surpassed iPhone. Yeah. Although yeah, I, I expect that to go up and down for a little while because one of the things that's going to happen we is got a new Apple, iPhone coming out in a couple. Yeah, of they'll months. release a new iPhone, and then that right. quarter, I would expect the iPhone right. will in fact outsell right. Android. But I think the long term uh, uh, plan is that yeah, you, you can expect Android to, to outsell uh, the iPhone. And what's interesting to me about Android is that they have basically combined three different things. First of all, it's completely open, so that's that's new, right? There, there aren't really any other open smartphone platforms unless you consider Symbian open, I suppose. Um, they, they, they're basically using the Windows Mobile model and the RIM model where they sell, uh, well, actually, this is the Windows Mobile model, where partners create the devices, and then they get sold on multiple wireless carriers, right? This is kind of key to the success. What's really interesting about that is you can have multiple Android models being sold at any given wireless carrier. Right. So you don't, you don't just say, well, I want this device, so I go with Verizon, or I want this device, so I go with Sprint or whatever. You could go to Verizon, and they may have two or three different Android uh, models. Really, really interesting. But then they, they've also copied the Apple app model, where this thing is extensible with a very uh, clearly defined application model and so forth. Um, you have uh, partners like HTC who are able to, um, you know, change the UI and do their own thing and that kind of stuff. And what you get at the end of the day is this kind of unbelievable platform is that's like the kitchen sink of everything else. And uh, it's hard not to imagine at this point, although, you know, things change pretty rapidly. Um, you know, Android not eventually coming away with the crown here, so to speak. Just but, because of the variety. Yeah, well, because of the combination of all these factors, right. you know. Um, Windows Mobile uh, obviously is on the way down. I mean, they're, you know, as you would expect. But what's interesting is a year ago, Windows Mobile and Apple were neck and neck, literally right. neck and neck. Right. Um, Apple has gr gone up by about 50% since then, and uh, Windows Mobile has gone down by probably about, I don't know, 30 or 40%. But This is worldwide, by the way. Worldwide, yeah. And, and that's why Symbian, Nokia Symbian, is still number one. Yeah. Although they're falling. You know, you can see that. And even in RIM, who's number two, is also down slightly. Apple's up, uh, you know, five percentage points. Not five percent, but five percentage points. You know, they, they were about 10% of the market a year ago. And now they're, I'm sorry, they sold 10 million units a year ago. Uh, and now they've... Um, this year, uh, this past quarter, they sold 15. But you would totally expect it to slow down because everybody knows there's a new one in June. I mean, I'm not buying because I'm waiting. My daughter lost hers, but I'm just telling her, you're going to wait because the new you would You would think so, but actually, you know, their unit sales over a year ago, same time frame, are up. And last year, we knew they were coming out with 3GS. In fact, if anything, last year, we knew exactly what that new phone was going to be. Apple had already announced it, if I'm not mistaken, by this point. Huh. Um so it's kind of interesting. I mean, you know, you would think with uncertainty. That is counterintuitive, isn't it? Yeah. When there's uncertainty, you would think that people would just wait to find out what was going on. But I, I think that what, what's happening with the Apple stuff is that the people like you and technical people, people in the know are waiting. But regular, this thing has just become a mass market right. 
product. It's and they it's see the ads. They're Apple's advertising like crazy. They're not. It, it would never occur to a normal person to think, well, I know what Apple's release right. cycle is, and I know that in June or July they're going to ship this new phone, so right. I should probably wait. They don't really think like that, right? Um, and I think that, but that speaks to the success of that particular device. Uh, anyway, interesting stuff, and I, 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 you know, where Windows Phone will fall into this little list, I don't know. I mean, hopefully for Microsoft, um, they could retain a, uh, you know, a top five position at some point with Windows Phone. I'd like to see them up in there, certainly. And then there's the the wild card stuff. You know, Palm OS has done uh, the Web OS has done poorly, but obviously they were just bought by HP, so those guys could have a, a comeback as well. We're going to take a break. Come back. There's a lot more to talk about. In fact, the new Hotmail. I'm very curious what you think of that. You wrote a good mm -hmm. article about it. That's where I got all my information at the uh, super site for Windows. Uh, also, uh, we've got our Windows 7 feature and tip of the week. We've got uh, software picks. Lots more to come before we do anything else, though. I do want to mention our friends at Citrix, the folks who do those great products. Go to my PC. Go to seminar. Uh, go to tra go to assist. Uh, go to training, and and of course, go to meeting. Go to, go to meeting is the best online meeting software out there. And I know Microsoft makes a competing product, but I can tell you, I've used them all. And when somebody wants to have a meeting with me, I just say, okay, fine. But if you don't mind, I'd like to host it because I want to use GoToMeeting. And then I just give them control and they can do it. I, I'm, I, this is all we do now, especially now there's an iPad app, which makes it so great to get, I go so outside with a Wi-Fi and sit in the yard and do the GoToMeetings. It's got a microphone and speakers. I don't need a phone. Incredible. I want you to try it free for, uh, for 30 days right now. If you go to GoToMeeting.com slash Windows Weekly. Go to meeting.com slash Windows Weekly. This is this is the this is the thing that takes those boring conference calls and makes them engaging because they're visual. We're you know, humans are visual. We like to see something. And if you're on a phone call, what are you seeing? Well, if you're not looking out the window, you're probably looking at your uh, your phone and playing uh, you know bejeweled. <laughs> you're not paying attention. You're farming. That's why you want to use GoToMeeting. It keeps people on the same page, keeps them engaged, keeps them looking at what you're talking about. They're more interested. They're more focused. You're going to save time. You'll be more productive. It's easy to install even for your clients. It's very quick, very simple. But I want you to try it first for sales presentations, product demos, for training sessions, for collaboration. We use it almost every day here at Twit Cottage now. I mean, we I mean, it's great. I want you to use it too. So try it free. Go to GoToMeeting.com slash Windows Weekly. 30 days absolutely free on us i know you're gonna like it paul therat is here he's actually not here he's in washington <laughs> state and my heart is there his heart is there he's visiting friends and uh working on his phone book his windows phone secrets book and uh we've got him though so that's why there, if there's occasional skype breakup that's what's going on and your your friend does not have the bandwidth that you do paul at home you oh really <laughs> i'm yeah. sorry no don't apologize it's mostly fine it's just every once in a while there's a little crackle I'll put a crack in his MacBook or whatever, or his uh, <laughs> iMac here. Just I'll just, I'll write with a permanent marker, your bandwidth stinks. <laughs> you're on a Mac. Oh, no wonder. Well, There's the problem. No, no, no. I'm on, no, no. Please. You're on your, you're on your laptop. Let's, let's not get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so Microsoft got a lot of press for this. This is Windows Live Wave 4 now, right? We've talked about yeah. all the yeah. other waves. This is the new wave. Mm -hmm. And it's Hotmail. Not to be, not, by the way, not to be consumed, confused with Google Wave, which is... <laughs> right, we're completely different. Completely thing. different. This is the Microsoft new Microsoft was using it first, by the way, I'm just saying. And I, you know, it's uh, Yahoo's uh, updated their mail. Uh, Google's mm -hmm. updated their mail kind of over a period of time. But this is the biggest update I can ever remember to Hotmail. This is exciting. Yeah, this is big stuff. And actually, one of the things that's interesting about this is, you know, it was such a big update this time. And um, there's been a big disconnect for years now between a lot of their services, you know, the mail and the live calendar stuff and the inability to get that on the mobile devices that I actually use. And, you know, um, I've been using Gmail for a while and I really like it, still like it a lot. I find it to be very efficient and so forth. But seeing what they were doing with this one, I thought, I need to, I need to use this. I can't just, you know, pipe other email in and look at stuff. I need to actually use the thing. So for the past couple of weeks now, I've actually replaced uh, Gmail with Hotmail. Um, which is sort of like saying I've replaced the internet with AOL, you know, when you think about it, um, it is what it sounds like, but actually it, it's getting there, you know, um, I think for a lot of the people who are, you know, power users or whatever, um, there may be a couple of little things in here that, uh, from a UI, ex you know, perspective that they may not be too excited about, but, um, I've, I, 
I could actually use this. I mean, I, and uh, and may continue. I, I will. I will keep using it, and we'll see how it goes. Um, so you have I'm, it already, because I don't have it. I don't think. Yeah. No. No. You're right. Right. It's not public yet. Um, it will be going public in mid to late June, and and the way Microsoft always does this, and this is unfortunate. It's is a that rollout, it's, right? Yeah, it's a rolling uh, upgrade, so you'll see it over time. Um, and is it, now, you're July. a paid user, uh, mm. and I'm not. I guess I should become a paid user. Are they changing how that works, too? I think they are. Or no? I don't know that, I don't know that they are, actually. Um, I have paid and unpaid accounts. The one that's on the new system is the unpaid account. But um, And I've always been... It's, I'm, I'm so used to that, that when Microsoft has done demos of this service to me, they actually use an unpaid account. And you see the ads, and it's... I, I sort of they're forget horrible. that there, there are ads. Yeah, they're yeah. kind of horrible. Um so I don't think that that's changing, uh, unfortunately. Um, for nineteen ninety nine a year or whatever, um, you can get a bunch of different things uh, by going with the paid version currently. And one of those things is no ads. And, and for me, it's worth it. And it goes across all of the sites. So, Well, see, this, you, ad, this ad is, is actually could be useful. Make less than $45,000. If you make less than $45,000, you might get return to yeah, school. Right, see, they, right. they've got the wrong person... Here. Well, if you're um, clicking on that ad because you think that that might help you make more than forty-five thousand, I'm suggesting that maybe there's a reason you make. <laughs> well, the other thing is Facebook yeah. at least knows that I'm fifty-three, yeah. uh, you know, and they know I don't live in Alabama. So, and it's just weird that right. uh, Microsoft is not taking advantage of what they know about me to to give me something a little bit more appropriate. Weird and yet comforting. It is comforting. They think you know? I'm a thirty-three-year-old uh, uh, hamburger yeah. flipper, yeah. which is great. So. Um, the big deal for me here, the, the reason that I could use this, aside from just you know general enhancements and so forth, is they've added Exchange Active Sync support finally, um, which is what Google uses, so that you can get push email contacts and Hotmail. I'm sorry, yeah, uh, push um, email contacts and calendar from an iPhone or an Android device or whatever. And uh, what that means is that now you can use this like you would any Exchange type account on your iPhone or Android device. It works perfectly. It does the multiple calendar stuff with the color coding. Uh, once we move on to iPhone OS 4 or today on Android, you can have multiple Exchange accounts. Um, and you can mix and match all that stuff uh, in the UI on the phones. It's really, really neat. So that's great. Um, but there are also some neat... Um, enhancements just to the web UI. And, and one of the things I really credit Google with is making webmail cool. Um, not making it cool again because it was never cool, but before Gmail came out, I mean, webmail was really lame, right? I mean, anyone who used the, you know, the, the, the web interface to email was just, I mean, it was so second rate. Uh, but Gmail was, is so good and continues to be so good up in the, uh, up in the cloud that um, that's the way I've been using. That's my primary email interface and has been for many years now. And I'd have to say, you know, switching from Gmail to Hotmail and using that web interface, it's actually not horrible. I mean, it's, if anything, it's been designed to act and look more like Gmail. Um, it supports the conversation view type stuff like Gmail uses, although it makes it optional, which I think is better. Um, there's some interesting stuff around photo and office document sharing, et cetera. And, it's got built-in yeah. support for um, apps, so especially the Microsoft apps, right? So you have in inline viewing. Yeah, although most of that stuff's not Microsoft oriented, it's you know YouTube videos, Flickr, uh, right. UPS, you know package tracking and so forth. The notion being that you know one one of the things Microsoft does have is it it pipes more email through its services than anyone else. So right. it can look at this email, it understands spam, it understands what people are doing with email. And I so like forth. this sweep thing because it's it's yeah. not exactly spam. It's like well, no, that's it's a like newsletter. Just get rid of it. Yeah. It's yeah. Like I, yeah. Because yeah. I have very good spam, spam filtering on all my mail, but right. still the bulk of it is not personal email. It's uh, newsletters, it's announcements, it's stuff that I don't consider spam, but I don't necessarily want to see in my inbox right away. Yeah, well, not not surprisingly or not coincidentally, this stuff is called gray mail, right? Because it's kind of right. a gray area. Um, there are email newsletters that I subscribe to on purpose and I want to receive. I really want to get that information. There's a lot of email newsletters that I don't necessarily explicitly uh, sign up for, but I get anyway. You know, sometimes you join a service online and all of a sudden you're on their email newsletter. You buy a product. Uh, you know, my wife bought a um, something for her brother and she gets this stuff in the mail all, every month now from this right. company that is completely, in a, you know, just not what she's interested in. And that's sort of what email is about. So one of the big distinctions that they're drawing in Hotmail is this uh, difference between spam and, you know, so-called gray mail and the different ways that you can 
um, observe how people respond to mail and then act accordingly. So if Hotmail detects that you have are consistently just deleting something without reading it, um, they'll start pushing that into a different folder so you don't have to deal with it. And then with the sweep tool, yeah, you can uh, you can either manually or automatically have it just get rid of stuff so that it unclutters your inbox. Right. Where do, you know, where, it's nice. I want to pay for Windows Live Mail. I'm just looking. <laughs> oh, oh, they make it really hard. How do I pay for this? <laughs> I yes. So what you need to search for exactly. In other words, there's no place. No, there. it's nowhere to say like buy. You know, uh, premium version or uh, exactly. It's called Hotmail Plus. Yeah. And what you need to do is actually you should probably just search for Hotmail Plus. Okay. Because otherwise I'll never find it. Because you'll never find it on the Microsoft site. They make it really hard to pay for this. Mm -hmm. Wow. Upgrade. Yeah. There it is. Nineteen ninety five a year. Because I have a paid Yahoo account. I just I, I like the paid accounts because I you know, I yeah. I don't I like getting rid of the ads. I think that's a nice yep. thing to do. Yep. Uh, yeah, I mean you know, it's gonna be interesting to see what else changes because one of the big uh, limitation removals in this version is A, they've gotten rid of the um uh, you know, the storage space is just unlimited now. Right. And, the, and they allow you, if you use Windows Live SkyDrive to host this stuff, to, to pass amazing amounts of content through email now. 10 gigabytes of uh, documents or photos per email. Up That's to great. That's about time. Because, God, right. most of these people, the limitations are so small. <laughs> but, what, but what they do is they don't actually attach it to the messages. You upload it to Windows Live SkyDrive. Oh, and that's the good. Yeah, it's it's actually better than good because on the other end, when someone gets the email like "Here are the photos from my it vacation," doesn't fill up their inbox either. And the presentation is beautiful. It, oh, it, that's it neat. creates this HTML email with a nice presentation. Now, on the downside, unless you choose otherwise, um, that content will be automatically removed after I think it's three months uh, by default, because it's designed to be a temporary thing. You know, in other words, we just went on vacation or wherever. We want to share the photos with my parents or whoever they are right. because, because those people are not on Facebook and they couldn't browse to our website if their life depended on it but they do get email right. so they can see the stuff in their email and if they want they can download the photos you know um, but the important thing is it's not clogging the pipes it's not going between the two email programs right and you've, you've got these emails from people you, you send them a bunch of photos oh, yeah. maybe you sent 10 megabytes of photos and then they reply and they send the photos back in the reply. <laughs> you know? Back and forth. So it gets, back and yeah, forth. it gets rid of that. It gets rid of that problem. So that's some that's some good stuff right there. It's uh, I, this is a fairly significant update. And I, th I think the bit we're waiting on here, there were two bits. I'd say um, is the integration with the office uh, the office web apps, right, which will happen starting on June fifteenth. And of course, that's when Hotmail's coming out anyway. And then also the other wave live uh, live wave four stuff, right? There's going to be a new version of the essential suite. Uh, with the messenger application, all the different applications. And I'm curious to see what the interactions are between these different uh, products and services when this new Hotmail is on the back end, too. So um, I don't have anything to say about that yet, but I think in the coming weeks we're going to have um, more information about what, what, what those applications, how they're going to change uh, to accommodate some of this stuff that's going on on the back end. Good. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, and is is Hotmail the only big uh, update, or there, there'll be other other updates too? Yeah. So, well, the calendar uh, and some of the other stuff that's related to, uh, to to Hotmail has been updated a bit. I mean, calendar and contacts haven't actually changed all that much. Um, there's integration with things like Facebook. So one of the <laughs> one of the mistakes I made was um, integrating my Facebook into my Windows Live account and then of course all, all 1500 contacts from Facebook popped up into my contacts list in Windows Live Hotmail which is not what I wanted um, that stuff uh, you know is a little although yeah, I think for most people actually that wouldn't be a problem but it gives you it, you can kind of a picture a situation where in your main contact list you may have a um, well you wouldn't because you got to have a Facebook but someone else might have a um, a fr you know a friend of me on Facebook and then I'm in their contact list in email as well and, it, and when you combine these accounts within Hotmail, it gives you the option to combine them so that you have one contact and it has all your Facebook stuff and all of your Windows Live stuff all aggregated together into a single view. And that's actually a neat way to do it because sometimes, you know, from your contact list, maybe what you have is just their email address. But because of Facebook, what you'll have is their, um, you know, their mobile phone number, you know, their address and all this other information. And that's actually really valuable when you're out and about with your mobile phone and you're connecting with them via right the connection on the phone and now you have the phone number because that's in facebook but it's something you might not have had otherwise so some interesting uh, integrations there but as far as the online services go 
Um, I don't think that they, I, I don't think they're talking yet about the other stuff, but there will, yeah, there'll be other changes on the, on the services side as well. I wonder, I wonder, oops, sorry. I wonder how long it's going to, my hand. And, 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 of course. Tonight on the Swedish Chef. <laughs> I wonder how long it's going to take before That's I start feeling left out because I deleted my Facebook account. I already feel left out for you. <laughs> no, I look at it and I go, oh, good. I guess I, I won't be doing that integration. I, uh, I think what's going to happen with Facebook is it's going to change. And I, I think the outcry is so big. Oh, I think you're These right. These guys are so popular uh, that this, they can't not change, you know. It's only a matter of time, and I'd like to see him acting uh, a little more quickly to make this happen. But right. I, th I think it's going to happen. I, you know, they apparently they're they're already thinking about changing the privacy options to. Uh, it, it'd be an easy thing to do; just make it pro private, unless you say otherwise. Period. Make it simpler than the tax code, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah sure. Wouldn't be hard to fix it. Just turn it all off. It's, but yeah, that's so but the problem is it doesn't match their corporate goals. And uh, that's the issue, and I'm sure that's why the debate rages. Well, as they get as huge as they are, and they're already getting more, I don't know, page views for ad impressions, whatever it is in, in Google, I mean, come on. Now is the time to stop screwing over your users and yeah. turn this into something valuable for people. doesn't you know? matter. I'm, I'm long gone. I'm never going back. <laughs> Seriously. Dead to me. They're dead to me. And I'm happy. By the way, I did pay my nineteen dollars, and I'm still seeing ads. Does it take a little while for them to figure it out? Take a little, yes. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> I don't want any more ads. And well, do like I get I any more features in mail now because I'm a paid? Uh, oh, good, the ads are gone. Yay. Yeah. Um, right. You do, and I, that's the thing. I, they may be changing because of these changes to the service, right? So one of the uh, there's changes around what you can attach, and I think the storage allotment and so forth. So. Do you get a lot of invitations from young women who want to befriend you? Not enough. Um, <laughs> it oh. seems like that's all I get. <laughs> Every time I sign into Skype, I have invitations from people. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. yeah. Which is I, odd because I've configured that not to let people know that I've signed in on the web. Yet yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, I, um, I, uh, I rarely sign in to MSN Messenger for that reason. It's like, <laughs> hey, huh. Yeah. And all of these are like, I, I, like this I have one. very specific things. I, I use hey. Skype to talk to you. Yeah. Hey. I use uh, I use Facebook to talk to you know the people I know and I'll, you know if people want to sign on to there that's fine I mean I I, I you know, whatever if you want to know more about me for some reason there now, it is how do I turn this because uh, now it's still at Hotmail can I change it to uh, live dot com or does it do I I mean I, yeah I'm, you'd have to change yeah you'd have to um, I have to do something start a new account yeah start a new account oh man so in other words by paying for this I really locked myself in yeah yeah you, you just screwed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you might be able to ask him to change it. I don't know. Nah, it's all right. Who needs it? I owe, you know, I wish passport still worked. <laughs> well, it, it does still work. They just don't call it that anymore. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, Windows Live ID. I mean, it's the, uh, you know, one ID to rule them all. It's still there. It's the source of your gamer tag and Xbox That's Live. That's right. It's the source That's right. of your yep. Zoom social account. Yep. It's still there. Mm hmm. Hey, here's a, such a good idea. here's a source of Chinese iPhone knockoffs. I should probably... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've seen those, by the way. They're, they're fantastic. They're much cheaper than others. And genuine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Says Sheldon Crush at Hotmail.com. All right, moving on. <clears throat> uh, actually, before we move on... Yes, sir. We did the smartphone sales anyway. Yep. Uh, we can just uh, really quickly... Um, you want to talk to the Office Live workspace? Just Yeah, it will take 10 seconds. It's just, um, you know, I have gotten some email from people who have used Office Live workspace. Um, Microsoft, to date, has two Office Live services online. Office Live Small Business, which is a way to host your, your website and your domain and, you know, your business online. That's still going to be there going forward. And then something called Office Live workspace, which was a way to uh, collaborate and store documents. Obviously, when you think about what Office web apps is, Office Live Workspace become somewhat superfluous. In the past, they didn't really want to talk about it. What they revealed last week was that everyone who is a subscriber, and it's free, to Office Live Workspace uh, will have their accounts moved over to Office Web Apps when that service becomes available starting next month. So um, there are many benefits to moving this over to Office Web Apps, but the big one, of course, is the storage space allotment is dramatically higher. So I think on Office Live Workspace, it was a couple of I don't know if it was 500, 512 megabytes or two gigabytes or something, but 
with uh, Office web apps, you get 25 gigs on SkyDrive. So kind of a dramatic. Uh, That's good. Change. I'm really glad to see them using SkyDrive more and more. Yeah. Because it's such a good thing. I mean, and it, you know, yeah, it's a great opportunity. Uh, let us take a break. Come back. We're going to get your Windows 7 feature of the week. Paul likes to highlight a little something that you may have forgotten about in Windows 7 and our tip of the week as well. But first, a tip for you to use Carbonite. You got to back up if you want to get it back. It's just that simple. And a lot of times people call me up and they say, I can't tell you how many times I get calls from listeners on the radio show saying, uh, I lost all our wedding pictures. And I say, did you back it up? And they said, no. And then I say, and they must really hate me for this. You got to back it up to get it back. Nitwit. So <laughs> I don't say the nitwit part, but I'm, <laughs> you can tell I'm thinking it. If you don't back up, I don't want to hear from you. You got to back up because every hard drive fails. Every system will fail. Even your backup systems will fail. You have to have backups of your backups. And, and the most important backup is that off-site backup. The one that happens automatically without you thinking about it so you don't have to remember you don't wake up in the middle of the night going, oh, I forgot to back up the server. It just happens. And that's what Carbonite's so good at. Go, go right now to Carbonite.com. Use the promo code Windows Weekly. I think we got a new one, so I'm going to put that in here. Windows Weekly. And you can try it absolutely free for 15 days. You don't even need a credit card. Now, what will happen? Well, as soon as you install it, and this is Mac or PC, although I imagine you'll all be using your PCs, won't you? Uh, the, as soon as you do this, It'll start backing up over the Internet. It uses your broadband connection, yes. So the amount of data that you have to back up and the speed of your connection will impact how long it takes to get all your data up to the web. But usually a couple of weeks is plenty. And then from then on, it's very quick, just doing the, a little stuff. Now, I, when I say quick, I don't want you to think that Carbonite in any way slows down your computer. They've done some really sophisticated stuff here so that Carbonite knows when your computer is busy. It doesn't, it doesn't use your connection or use your computer unless you're not using it. But it does all, there's a lot of idle time on a, on a PC. It does always get that stuff up there. And it's safe. It's secure. You can encrypt it with AES 256-bit encryption. Only you know the key, so it's really private. It uses SSL, so nobody can see it as it goes up. Even if you're on a un unencrypted Wi-Fi, it would be safe. Not that I recommend that. Although, I, and I have to say, this is, uh, this is uh, you know, my daughter's about to go to college. She's going to have Carbonite on that lap laptop. She's getting a 13-inch uh, MacBook. She's going to have Carbonite on that laptop as she goes to college. Because I don't want to hear from her, oh, Dad, I lost the paper I was working on or my thesis or whatever. It's just going to automatically back up. And since I know that she will be on, on uh, Wi-Fi access points that are not protected, this is really good to know. It'll be using SSL, completely safe. And I don't even have to tell her it's backing up. Just all I have to do is say, oh, yeah, well, I happen to be backing it up. You didn't even know it. Great for a student about to leave. Great for any laptop computer because they all get lost. Great for anybody who just wants to make sure they don't lose that vital data. Less than five bucks a month for an unlimited amount of data from your computer. It has to be from your hard drive, of course. And it's your personal stuff. It doesn't back up Windows or your apps, just your data. Carbonite.com. Use Windows Weekly as the offer code. And you can try it free for two weeks. And then if you decide to buy for less than five bucks a month, $55 a year, uh, which is a great deal, you get two free months. So it's even better. Uh, Carbonite.com. Use the coupon code Windows Weekly. That's all I got to say. It's the greatest. All right, Paul, our Windows 7 tip. What do you See, like? my face is like pushed right into the camera. Yeah, what, were, you, were, you, were you falling over I there? Was, I was so interested by your Fascinated. Carbonite. Well, I think for a, kid, for a college student, that's a big issue, you know? I mean, you're not going to... There's no way I'm going to give Abby a USB drive and say, back it up, dear. Sure. She's not just gonna, for, for anybody, for really. Anybody. She's not going to do that. My mom, same thing. And for 55 bucks a year... Sure. That's less than one textbook. It's half what one textbook is going to cost. Um, I just I have the peace of mind. I just know she's always going to have her data. So it, it, it's the kind of it's ironic because the guy who invented Carbonite, David Friend, uh, that's exactly why he did. His college age daughter lost an important paper, and he said, "There's got to be some way to do this. It's better." Let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. How long does it take for a, a Mac photo screensaver typically just to go to a blank screen? <laughs> This thing has been animating. <laughs> it's all up to your friend and how he said it, I'm afraid. Oh, he's obviously God. said it and forgotten it. I mean, I can't turn it off. I want oh, to. It drives my wife crazy, too, you know, because I have uh, the, the desktop in the, uh, it's just off the kitchen. 
Um, and I had it for a while, a photo screen saver. It was pictures of our kids. And she said, could you please turn that off? Because every time I walk by, I burst into tears. Or, or, or I get engaged or I want to look, well, you know, because like, they're growing Like a now. Manchurian candidate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's brainwashed. He's, he's feeling a little fragile. <laughs> yeah. No, it's because she, and they're pictures of our little kids and now they're grown going to college. And so sure. she doesn't want to see that. So I had to take it off and put something completely innocuous on. You, I don't know why you're worried. It's not even your kids. Well, I, I mean, actually, every once in a while, there's a picture of me in here. And then, you know, my wife and I came out to visit one time. So there's some pictures from that trip. And Oh, yeah. So you don't want that. It's not, it's not the content that bothers me. It's the, the constant animation. It's just, it's you know, the pictures are rotating in, you know. And You know, Paul, just unplug the damn thing. It's okay. Max, don't yeah, care. He's got, no, no. He's got stuff running. I can't do that. <laughs> Uh, oh, sorry, I unplugged your computer. I hope you don't mind, dude. I left it on, but I did push it off the edge of the desk. <laughs> <laughs> you know that window that you have carefully positioned next to your desk? It just seemed like the right thing to do. I wouldn't leave it open if I were you next time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so one of the things that Paul did when Windows 7 was on its way is we you were extensive documentation of new features yep. and how it's different. But that's been a while now. It's been a year almost. Right. So uh, we figure you might have forgotten some things about Windows 7, and that's why we've got our Windows 7 Feature of the Week. It's funny. I've been trying to do new ones, but um, you know, I'm away this week, and I've been so so busy. So this is one of the classic ones, and we haven't gone over it since we started the well, series. Well, that's what I'm but, saying. That's what I'm saying. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's... <laughs> It's what I do. Anyway, uh, this <laughs> it's kind of like Groundhog Day, isn't it, Paul? Forever yeah, yeah, and like, ever yeah, and ever. Exactly. It's okay. Oh, this again. I'm only comfortable when I'm doing what I do. So uh, this week's Windows 7 feature of the week is the Windows Experience Index, or WEI. And this is that, you know, the infamous feature that debuted in, in Vista that gives you a performance rating for your computer and causes much angst amongst those who care about such things. Because obviously... If you're a, a power user, you know, you want your your computer to be as fast as possible. And um, back in the Windows Vista time frame, I recall, well, first of all, I should say it, it, the, the rating goes from 1 to 5.9 on Windows Vista. And then now in Windows 7, because it's a, a new system, apparently, they, the rating goes up to 7.9, which is a little confusing because, you know, looking at that, you might think, well, you know, new devices have come along. Maybe they've needed to, you know, open up the top end of it because devices move more quickly and so forth. But the problem is it's not actually the same scale because a device that, say, got a 3.4 on the old scale may get a 4.1 or whatever on the new one. So the, the scale has actually changed as well, which is confusing. But uh, back in the Windows Vista timeframe, Lenovo had sent out one of their uh, portable workstations. You know, these are the, the laptops that have that extra screen that slides out. Have you oh, seen yeah, 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 yeah. And I recall, uh, I took a screenshot of it at the time, but I, I believe that the overall rating on this thing was 5.8. Which is good. That's very high. Is, well, no, no, it's not just good. It's, it's, it's like spectacular. Product, it's product, as good as it can be. I six mean, is the highest. Uh, 5.9 is the highest. I yeah, so oh, wow, wow. it actually scored a 5.9 on everything except for one thing. I don't remember what it was. Holy moly. And that other thing scored, I think it was 5.8. And um, So the lowest so, one is the one that it keeps. It's the one that uses the score, right? So in other words, it's not an average. And I think right. this is one of the things that causes that angst, you know. On, on the laptop I have right now, the score is 3.4, but that's a little deceptive because the processor, which is a fairly low-end processor, by the way, this is a, I'd have to go back and look, but I want to say it's a 1.3, yeah, 1.3 gigahertz, also low, ultra low Oh, it's voltage. a ULV, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually it's a 4.1 on this scale, and the, the memory gets a 4.8, which is decent, and the hard drive gets a... It's the graphics. It's the graphics. It's always the graphics, and it's yeah. always the the 3D graphics because this is a system aimed at business users. Yeah, and it doesn't really have a you know a dedicated 3D chip with its own memory. It's obviously an integrated. But you don't uh, care. I don't care. But you know, in other words, but you look at this uh, score and you think, oh my goodness, you know, this is a terrible score. This machine is not really worth it. But the truth is, you know, even even low end systems, two point whatever. Uh, run Windows very acceptably. And I, I think this is part of the confusion around this thing. Um, when Windows Vista came out, and, and this was part of the deal, the supposed reason for this was that it was a way to gauge a number of things, whether you could run Windows Arrow, which was a huge concern back then for about 15 minutes, and then whether certain applications, especially games, would run acceptably. And one of the things that Microsoft kind of planned for and made the infrastructure for, but I don't think was really ever taken advantage of, was this notion that game makers could say, you need this at least this score in the graphics. You need at least this score for the overall performance. And if you don't have it, 
you're going to have to tune down the features of the game for it to run acceptably, acceptably, or maybe it won't run at all, you know. And that doesn't really happen, but you can kind of see the vestiges of this if you go into the Games Explorer. You know, the built-in games all specify, you know, the minimum scores they need to run. And, of course, they're all really small. Typically, I think they're all 1.0 or whatever. So um, the real point here, though, I think, is that this gives a way for support people to quickly gauge what the problem might be in your system if you're having performance issues. So they can look at things like the RAM or the graphics and look at the applications you're running and make a determination along those lines. So it's kind of still kicking along, and it's been changed a little bit in Windows 7. But for the most part, it is as it was in Vista, a slightly different measurement scale. But, you know, again, I, I think the, the angst thing is a little tough here because you really don't have to be all that worried about the score unless it's, you know, below 2.0 or whatever on any of those uh, on any of those measurements. I wish they averaged it. I think that would help people. <laughs> to know well, it wouldn't, wouldn't scare them anyway. Right. I mean, if you average the, you know, 5.6 or 3.4, you'd look at 5 point, it'd be 4.5. That would be my score. And uh, that would be significantly higher than the 3.4 that it's reporting. And I'd feel better about my computer. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, I, I think I understand why they want to do lowest, uh, the, the, yeah. the least, because that's the one that keeps you from doing. Like if, it, if you sure. had something that was 1.0, you might not be able to do Aero Glass, even if everything else was fine. So that's it really true. is the weakest link that determines they're your also, capabilities. You know, they don't get a lot of credit for it, but they're also very conservative about things. When you look at stuff like the reliability monitor, it's very easy for your computer to get a lower score. If anything goes wrong, the score goes flying down. But if things go right over a long period of time, the score only edges up. I mean, they really don't give a lot of credit for uh, good stuff. But when some, anything bad happens, even if, if it doesn't necessarily impact your experience, you know, the overall reliability score goes down dramatically. And I, I think the, the Windows Experience Index is based on the same mentality in a way that, you know, uh, it's just going to be brutally honest about how bad things are and, um, you know, just be more upfront about it, I guess. Be brutally honest. Yeah. Be brutal with me, brutal. <laughs> Hurt me. And now our Windows 7 tip of the week. This is a good one. I'm glad. I'm excited. I'm thrilled. <laughs> yeah, this is interesting. We talked a few weeks back, I think, about how you can use uh, things like SkyDrive or um, uh, GladNet to you know, connect your SkyDrive storage, and that's nice. You know, some people don't want to use third-party utilities, which is understandable. If you have Office uh, 2010, including the beta version, you can get into, you know, where your SkyDrive uh, URL is, sort of a web dev style URL, and you can use that to map a network drive. Right. We talked about that as a but Actually, you don't even need that. So there, there are a couple of different ways to do this. Um, you can do it manually, and and the way to do that is is and I'm gonna by the way on Friday I will publish an article that explains this. So uh, please don't use this podcast as the definitive, you know, <laughs> Fret because, not. Well, there's a lot of stuff here. I mean, it's right. it's hard to explain. But what it basically involves is, you know, signing into your Windows Live ID, um, linking your Windows Live ID to your Windows Seven login, which we've discussed in the past. We discussed this as part of the Office uh, 2010 tip. Um, look at the URL when you go to SkyDrive, you know, copy and paste part of that and then use a specific um, um, string, you know, in, in the map network drive uh, in Windows Explorer. And that works fine. And again, you can't, you're not going to be able to do it based on what I just said, but I will, I'll document this more thoroughly. If you're looking for another way to get to specific addresses in your SkyDrive hierarchy, there's a, um, a new utility called SkyDrive Simple Viewer. And with this, you log on to your Windows Live ID, and then it provides you with the URLs for all of those folders. So you can get the URL for your uh, your main SkyDrive oh. address, right? Is you that also, all you need for the web dev? Yeah, and that will give you the whole um, the whole string that you need. So that's actually kind of a, a handy uh, tool to that's use. That's an easy way to do it, yeah. Yeah, so I should thank uh, Andrew Nurse was the guy who sent, uh, one of the guys, actually, I think there were others too, but who sent forward the, uh, the manual instructions, which again, I'll document on Friday. And then... Uh, Vernon Vincent sent me along the, uh, the tip about the SkyDrive Simple Viewer. Um, we have a, an address for that one in the show notes, but it's uh, it's on the addictivetips.com uh, website. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. All right, we're going to come back with our software of the week in just a bit. Two of them, once again. You're yeah. so good. But before we do, I think it'd be a good time to mention our good friends at Audible.com. Paul and I are really big Audible fans. And I know when you travel, when you get on a plane, you get on equipped with at least a book or two to listen to. I, I travel with a lot of books. 
Yeah, me too. I, I, you know, it's funny. If you look at me getting on a plane, it looks like I have a pathological fear of, <laughs> of boredom. Like, oh, oh my a God. <laughs> a pathological fear of interacting with other people. Yeah, or that, maybe that too, but I've got players multiple ones i've got my you notebooks. do that thing where you're 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 in your seat right and you're, you're looking at something in my case it might be like kindle or you know a newspaper or magazine whatever it is you've got your headphones on and you're listening to something it could be music it could be a podcast whatever and then the you suddenly become aware that the person next to you is talking to you oh and then you do the exaggerated sort of thing where you like you slowly put down the book and then you go <laughs> yeah. what <laughs> yeah. is that not, oh that's good you know, I gotta try that. That's what you gotta just be a little, a little peeved. Yeah, and do it slowly to indicate. And then, and then they look at you like you're the jerk, and they're like, "I just wanted to know if you wanted something to no, drink." No, you're the jerk. <laughs> you know, Not me. It's you're the jerk. As, it's important to be as antisocial as possible. I, you know, well, I, I it's stupid because the the few times I've gotten into conversation on the plane, they've often been really great. Yeah. Uh, I sat next to uh, the brother of some very famous person on a, and, and i found out like the moment we got off the plane and it was like gee i would have loved to have talked to you um so it's really dumb of me but i am antisocial because because really the truth is the the okay you know the benefit of talking to somebody in the plane is far outweighed by the horror of being stuck for six or seven hours with some non-stop oh. talker that's oh, i had that too yeah yeah and they, i mean it can be bad the woman who was afraid of flying, and I, I finally fell asleep on the plane, and then when it landed, she grabbed my hand so hard I jumped out of my seat. Yeah, it was because one. she was scared to death. I've yeah. had fingernails in my... But, you know, if, if it's a pretty girl, it's okay. You you sure. can you can dig sure. your nails into my arm anytime. <laughs> yeah, go to town. I'm, I'm going to be asleep. <laughs> but, no, it is more... It's more... It's not to not to seal myself off from the world, but it really is some sort of horror, strange horror uh, that I have of just finding myself... I, can't, I mean, can you imagine the worst thing you could do is to be on a plane with nothing to read... Nothing to listen to, nothing to do, but stare out the window. And sure. and the worst thing that ever happened to me is once I didn't have my headphones. And so uh -huh. I had to hear the people behind me for six hours talk about what they were going to do when they got to Disneyland. And it was like, oh! <laughs> yeah, you know what you do then is you ring the call button, and then when the woman comes up, you say, could you um, could you kill me, please? <laughs> yeah, sharp. You got any... <laughs> Any sharp sticks you can plunge yeah. in my eyes because I'm... I know I'm, there's a ban on weapons and whatnot, but there must be something. Something. Uh, I could throw myself I've got 500 on. aspirin, anything. So, <laughs> yeah. so it really, if you see me get on, I mean, my, that backpack is loaded with pa yeah, no, paper I, I materials. Yeah, I overcompensate printed, for entertainment everything. every time I fly. Yeah. Yeah. But Audible is a really great way to get through those times, not just planes, but commutes, uh, the gym. I mean, I'm not crazy about the treadmill, but I don't mind because I, I don't even, it goes by like nothing because I'm listening to a great Audible book. If you go to audible.com slash windows, you can sign up today for the gold account. That'll be a book a month. First one's free. You can cancel any time, and it's always yours to keep. So you really, this is a, a free book. And um, you've picked a very interesting one. Is this something you just listened to, or is it about you're about to No, it's something to? I just got. And, uh, you know, every time I come out to Seattle, I stay with my friend uh, Joe, who is, I, I think, the most addicted to Audible guy there is. I mean, he has hundreds and hundreds of books. And we were talking, and as I do every time I come out, I always talk to him about audible picks and so forth. And uh, so he recommended this, and I did grab it. And um, it's called The Post-American World by Fareed Zakaria. Oh, I, he's the only guy I could stand on CNN these days. I love yeah, Fareed yeah. Zakaria. He's got an awesome uh, robot quality to him. I keep waiting for him to rip his face off and have snakes come out of it. This but, is Fareed Zakaria. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but he's so smart. He's, just he's so smart. got something to say. The rest of the guys yeah. are nitwits. Yeah, no, he's a smart guy. And and the post-American world suggests some kind of, uh, if not anti-American, you know, but a book about the decline of America. That's not really what this is about. It's more about uh, the rise of other countries like China, right. India, Brazil, and so forth, and how this is going to change the dynamics of how, you know, we interact with these uh, Precisely. countries. You know? Precisely. I mean, right now America is sort of the one superpower, but... Um, you know, there's going to be a bunch of countries economically that are uh, that are superpowers, and it's it's going to create a different uh, dynamic essentially. So uh, that's what the book's about. I mean, I think he, I think they they chose a somewhat controversial title on purpose, but I, I don't think the actual content is as controversial as the title suggests. No, I'm sure he's very measured. But he's a, yeah, he is, and he's a yeah, he's a smart. He's like the new guy. Tom Friedman, really. Yeah, there you go. The Post-American World for Reed Zakaria. Now, this is yours free, but it's just one of many titles you can choose from. You get a credit towards a free book. That's what you get with the Oh, I should, I should know, by the way, he reads the book, too, which is important. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, in this case, I wouldn't mind that. He's a good yeah. Uh So a really great uh, choice of business books, but also fiction, nonfiction, history, uh, bios, great science fiction. I know the wind-up girl just... Uh, just uh, got the 2009 Nebula Award. This is something uh, that uh, they were reading on Sword and Laser from Paolo uh, Bacigalupi. Um, there's just, you know, don't feel like you have to listen to Paul's pick, but uh, Paul's pick is a great way to place to start, but there's a ton of other stuff. He, he just finished Under the Dome a few months ago. I know you loved that, the Stephen, new Stephen King novel. Um, that's normally $52 if you had to buy it, but no, it's free right now. Audible.com slash Windows. And that is one of the reasons I do like the subscription accounts. You save a lot of money on books. You know, you don't have to really think about how much it's going to cost. It's very affordable. Audible.com slash Windows. We thank them so much for their support of Windows Weekly. And we invite you to give them a try. Now for our software of the week. Two of them. I'm still mesmerized by a slideshow. What, what is it showing right now? Uh, there's a guy. I, it's. <laughs> I think they took a picture. This is a guy wearing a kind of a profane T-shirt. This is F Barbie. Which <laughs> is really. I uh, sure took a picture and I, I I thought I got it on Buzz and I guess I didn't and so it's gone now. Mm -hmm. But uh, of, when I was in Austin, of a guy yep. that said his T-shirt said, "I'm from Texas." F y'all. <laughs> nice. I yeah, it was like very it's... welcoming. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Made me feel it's like you know, well. as, as my wife reposted on Facebook this week. There's no I in team, but there three are three U's and go f yourself. <laughs> <laughs> now that's so. a good T-shirt. I want that one. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> Anywho. This is how we interact these yes. days. Anyway, uh, so we, yes, we have two software picks of the week. Uh, the first one is courtesy of Victor Sacco, and I've actually been I, well. Actually, I'm using both of these this week. Uh, um, it's a replacement for AeroSnap and also for some other features in Windows 7. And it's called AquaSnap for some reason. It doesn't really copy Mac OS X from what I can tell. But if you think about the way AeroSnap works, it allows you to push windows up against the left and right edge of the screen. Mm -hmm. It also allows you to, um, to maximize them in kind of a unique way uh, vertically, right, up top to bottom, uh, and then maximize normally. But this adds something, if you're familiar with Visual Studio, for example, if you grab any of the docked windows in Visual Studio and you move them around, you know, maybe it's docked to the right side of the window and you want to move it to the left side, you get these little guide windows that appear that show you where you can dock it. And you can't just dock it to the left and right. You can dock it to the top, the bottom, and, and to the corners. And that's what this adds to, Aqua, uh, to AeroStep. So when you grab a window and start moving and you move it toward the edge of a screen, it will give you these little guides that, say, that will show you where you can dock it. So... You don't just get left and right, but you get top, bottom, and in the corners. Oh, that's great. That's actually really interesting. There's some other stuff going on in this tool. It allows you to change the behavior of Arrow uh, Shake if you want. I don't actually use that one. And it also gives you the ability to make windows translucent to different degrees while you're dragging them so that as you're dragging a window around, you can see through it and see what's below it. I don't actually use that part of it either, but there's some other stuff going on there, so it's kind of interesting. So if you like the idea of Arrow Snap, but you want it to do a little bit more, this is a really interesting way to do it, and it does work really well. Very cool. The second one is called uh, Tiny Spell, and this one is from Dan Gardner. And what this is is essentially a little program that runs down in the tray, and it adds spell checking capabilities to programs that don't have spell checking. This, I think, has been around a really long time. Probably, yeah, yeah. Now, the reason this is interesting is that, you know, I think for a, a pretty huge percentage of people, I mean, something like Notepad would work fine if they just want to take quick notes. Um, but oh, of course, so Notepad no, has spell check? No, Notepad does not have ah, spell check. Okay. But this is running, it does. Got it. And uh, as do other applications. So this is an interesting way to add spell checking, you know, to applications uh, that just don't have it. And it works great with, say, you know, Notepad, those type of applications. So uh, that works very well as, as well. And it kind of runs in the background and just kind of... Yeah, yep. yeah you don't even know it's it. there. But then once you start typing in something like Notepad, you make a spelling mistake, you get the little squiggles, there's a... Uh, a keyboard short you can, you can uh, you know, to get the little list of uh, potential changes, and you can change it that way. It's nice. And they have a free version and a ten dollar version. So, yep. Take your pick. Yep. Tinyspell.numerate, n u m e r i t dot com. But we've the show notes will have. Uh, I think if you just go to tinyspell dot com, it will actually. Push oh, okay. It. There you go. Even easier. Yes. And Dan Gardner gets credit for that one. Yep. Well, thank you, Paul. Another great 
episode of Windows Weekly. Are you coming home uh, after the uh, week or? <laughs> I've sort of. I, I have. Uh, I'll be home for a couple of days, but of course we're going to Lisbon next week. So I think we're trying to get uh, Mary Jo Foley and or Ed Bot uh, to sub for me next week because I'll be away. That'd be great, and have a yeah. great time in Barcelona. That is no in Lisbon. 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 Lisboa. <laughs> Lisboa. That's right. Lisboa. That that'll be uh, fun. I've always wanted to go there. We I have really we have movie. listeners there, so don't be surprised if somebody walks. Oh up no, to I've you. heard. Yeah, I've heard from. In fact, I've, a couple of people have said, you know, hey, if you're around and. The thing is, you know, it's our anniversary. No, no, you can't do that. We're only there for a couple of days. Okay. Um, you know, when you factor in the travel at either end, but I'm really just there for two and a half days. So um, I don't think my wife would be too cool with that. But hey, if you I, don't mind, yeah. I'm going to go out drinking with the fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm normally uh, be happy to do that kind of thing. I got some requests this week, too, as I do when I come to Seattle. And I, I am so busy. I mean, uh, Monday, literally, I got up. I was at the campus at 8.30 in the morning, and I... I worked there until six, but then I worked until midnight. Wow! Because I just had other stuff to do. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff going on, so it's it's uh, it's just been busy. A busy, busy man. Well, if you're on a plane with Paul and he's got headphones on and he's don't uh, talk, hey, don't, talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> don't to offer to buy him a beer, nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You'll, you'll, you... get, you'll get the exaggerated. You talking to me? What? And I will just beat you to death with my headphones because they are huge. <laughs> do you do the Bose Quiet Comforts? Oh, what yeah, do you? you have to. Yeah, you have, you have to. to. Do it, it would, if you travel regularly, you can't not have this kind of thing. It's dangerous. It's 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 not. I, I really feel that planes are dangerous to your hearing. Oh, that's interesting. I never even thought of it that way. The prolonged uh, exposure to that kind of background sound will harm. It'll give you tinnitus or harm your hearing in some way. Well, I think I just is my feeling that prolonged exposure to nitwits will do that and. Uh, Yes, the, uh, the solution to that is a little less clear cut, but yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I got the solution. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? Did you say something? You talking to me? I should, just, I should make little cards, you know, so when they talk, I can just hand it to them and it just says no. No. I'm busy. Go away. <laughs> Next yes. week, we have subs. We're not sure who. I'm uh, hoping we can get Mary Jo Foley and Ed Bott, which would make it a lot of fun, but uh, we're working on that. Mm -hmm. Paul Therott is the editor-in-chief of the Supersite for Windows, and even though he travels a lot, he is always up to date there. Go to Supersite, the winsupersite.com site, winsupersite.com, and check it out. <laughs> one of those. Guess which one it is. <laughs> <laughs> you pick. Supersite Win, for Windows. Um, Supersite. Some Win. combination of those letters. <laughs> in some order. Thank Google you for listening. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been good at the plugs, I must say. Paul, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Have a great time in Portugal.